Bourne Town is a non-league football club based in the market town of Bourne in South Lincolnshire. Formed in 1883, the Wakes have spent the last 136 years bobbing around between the Peter and District League, the Midland League, and most recently the United Counties League, where they've been members of Division 1 since their relegation from the Premier League in 2010. The club plays its home games at Abbey Lawn, a sports complex developed in the 1930s in the former grounds of Bourne Abbey. In addition to the football club, Abbey Lawn is also home to cricket, tennis, bowls, hockey and patank clubs and an outdoor swimming pool. I'm not quite sure what patank is, but I've googled it doesn't seem as dirty as it sounds, so hopefully it's not going to lead to this video being demonetized. Much like the football club, the town of Bourne itself has a long history of not very much happening. Bourne Abbey dates back to the 12th century, with the local economy based largely on rural industries until the railway opened up a market for bottled water, leading to a boom in agriculture. I'm not entirely sure how. I'm not a farmer. More recently, the town has started to reinvent itself around engineering and tourism, and is experiencing a huge expansion with a considerable number of new build houses appearing since the start of this century. The town seems to be going places, and and the time has come for the football club to catch up, which is where Sir Mick Powell comes in. The home FC legend, link to that series is in the description for anyone disputing his legendary status, bought Bourne Town in the summer of 2019 with dreams of the club one day reaching the giddy heights of the Football League, grand ambitions for a team currently in the 10th tier, and he seems willing to put his money where his mouth is, agreeing to underwrite the club's rise through the leagues, and already eyeing up a potential future move out of Bourne Town Centre to nearby Milking Nook, where Bourne Rugby Club played, partly to get the space needed to build a ground fit for professional football, and partly because he just likes the name. Things are already starting to change for the Wakes, with the club recently announcing a a new, more modern badge and a very snazzy set of home, away and third choice kits, with rumours that an online club shop will be opening soon to allow Bourne fans from around the world to wear the club's colours with pride. The missing piece of the jigsaw was a manager capable of masterminding Bourne's rise through the footballing pyramid, a manager with the talent, vision, experience and beard to take the team to heights never before thought possible. So Mick is sure he's got his man and that the future of Bourne Town Football Club begins right here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bourne Legacy. Hello and welcome to episode one of The Born Legacy. I'm Kev and coming up on today's episode, we are going to have a proper look around our new club, Born Town Football Club, and uh, meet the players. And it will be a case of me meeting the players for the first time because as is the nature with these uh, tier 10 databases, uh, there's, there's not a lot of actual real players in the database. So this is going to be a lot of players who are generated for us. So I have no idea how good this team is likely to be. We're going to explore it it together but goodness me am i excited to be able to bring this series to you it's been a long time coming and there has been a lot of work gone in behind the scenes to get us to this point it's just a couple of thank yous before we get up and running thank you to gunner designs for the awesome redesigned newborn badge that you can see uh, you can see just there there it is. Shiny new badge. You'll have a proper look at that in a second. You've already seen it on the thumbnail. Uh, thank you to request a kit for the awesome kits that aren't on the wall because I don't know. They're in the I promise you they're in the game. I have checked that much. And thank you to the FM editor for creating a tier 10 database. It's insane the amount of work that goes into doing one of those. Uh, but if you want to play along. I'm just using the FM editor's tier 10 database with just a couple of tweaks. So Mick Powell isn't in the isn't in the official one. You know, you got to do a little bit of tweaking. Links to all three of those are down in the description below. I urge you to go and check them out. Like I say, this series would absolutely not be happening without the help of those three people. So big thanks to them. Um, also, if you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, turn your notifications on. This is going to be a big one. Um, we started in tier eight last year with home and it took about 250 episodes. We're starting in tier 10 this year strap yourself in this is this is going to be epic and of course because it is the start of a brand new series we need to start things off with a bang so if you are looking forward to it please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on the video for me to demonstrate your excitement we've seen with non to legend this year the massive difference that likes can make to the success of videos so if we could hit i mean let, let's be insane let's say five thousand likes if we can hit five thousand likes on this video I'll be very happy. Oh, even better deal. If we hit 5,000 likes on this video, I won't ask you for likes for a couple of days. Starting from like episode four, because I'm pre-recording the first three because I'm going away. You can't say fairer than that. Right, let's uh, let's get into it. We've, we've waffled on for long enough. As you can see, I have 
become manager of Bourne. I cannot believe they're paying me £325 a week uh, because this club doesn't have the money to pay anybody £325 a week. This is the kind of club where in real life the players come along and stick a fiver in the kitty to, to be able to play. I'm assuming. I don't know. Um, there's your little history of the club, though. Formed in 1883. Um, last The last time they uh, won anything was 1991, when they made it all the way up to Tier 8, which is some spectacular stuff for Bourne. Um, and I mentioned it would be a la- largely a team of new gens, and it will be, but there is one player from real life who is there in the database. I did not expect to see him when I first decided I was going to be working with Bourne. Julian Joachim, off of the 90s is still a football player, aged 44 now. Um, he's a player coach and presumably going to be our star man. Um, I love the fact that Julian Joachim is going to be here, but as you can see, he is our top earner. How much are we paying Julian Joachim? Zero pounds a week. I'm on £325 a week. That that gives you some context. Work within the wage budget. Don't give me £325 a week in wages then. Um, Sir Mick Powell, our chairman, he's looking for a top half finish this season. Um, And then, I mean, not much ambition beyond that. We need to be out of this league within five years, for goodness sake. Um, But there's my beautiful face. What I was saying to you about about money, I'm being paid £325 a week. Our entire playing budget is £276 a week. And the the balance of the club is £734. We had this problem last year with home. I don't know that there's any way to pay me less. I, I have the editor disabled. I'm not going to be using the editor because it just I, I don't want the option to be there because people will always question the save if the editor's available. So I can't edit my salary down. So because of that, I did mention there was a tweak to the standard database. And that tweak is we've set Sir Mick Powell as a background sugar daddy for the club. Now, I'm not entirely sure what that means. I think what it means is if we plunge... Two hundred thousand pounds into debt, he'll put the money in to top us back up to zero again. If he starts hurling money around and giving us a million pounds to spend, then I then I did it wrong. Let's hope that doesn't happen. I don't think that's likely to happen. I have run a couple of tests and there's no money flying around in the test runs that I've done. So I think we probably should be okay. Um, the only other tweak I've done is bumped up the reputation of the club slightly as well. They're, they're, the reputation of Bourne Town in the standard database is 100, um, which makes them comfortably the worst team in the division. And I don't like those odds. If we get relegated, the series ends because we haven't got tier 11 loaded. So I've bumped the reputation up to 400 in the hope of being able to just attract a a few slightly better players. That still only puts us to the middle of the pack in the division. The top rated team in the division has a reputation of 700. So I've not made us super overpowered. And as you can see, that's reflected in the the season preview where we've got a prediction of 12th place. Sir Mick wants a mid-table finish. Everything looks like it's lining up to to work the way it's supposed to, which is always encouraging when you're doing a save at this level. Um, but I think the time has come where we need to go and meet this team. We've procrastinated for long enough. We're all absolutely desperate to see who's going to be joining Julian Joe Chim in our ranks. Um, if you are wondering how I've done this next bit, it, it, it's an option when you're setting the game up. Um, you just click that Add Players to Playable Clubs button. And because Julian Joachim is the only player allocated to Bourne in the database, it fills out the rest of the squad with new gens, as it will for all the other teams in these leagues. So you then get that magical dice roll moment where you might get a Mick Powell or an Anthony Harris or a Dean Morris, or you might not. Um, you might just have a team of Levi Pottons who are all gone before the season starts. So, let's, uh, let's. This is our first team squad. So, what we're really looking for is five star potential youth players. Because if we have anybody who's too good at first team level, because they're because they're not under proper contracts, they they'll just go. We saw that with home last year. Anyone who was any good at the start left apart from the youngsters because with the youngsters you get them for two years on their youth contracts as you can see with some of these youngsters that we've got so let's get the uh let's get the under 23s and the under 18s loaded i don't want to miss out on anybody if we sort by current ability as you can see at aged 44 julian Joachim is still head and shoulders above everybody else 
in the t- in tier 10. I mean, this man's career is nuts. I mentioned he's off of the 90s. I wasn't being facetious. I used to watch this guy play for Leicester against Peterborough back in the 90s. I know he then went on to play for Villa, Coventry. He left Coventry in 2004. That's 15 years ago. 15 years ago, this man started dropping down the leagues. Walsall, Boston, dropped into non-league more than 10 years ago with Kings Lynn. That would be an interesting save. Um, And, I mean, he's just been doing the tour ever since. He was born in Peterborough, much like his new boss, Kev. um, And he has largely stayed sort of vaguely in the area. Uh, Bourne is about 20 miles away. And, uh, yeah, it seems like he's having a right old lovely time. He'd be a decent player for most United Counties League Premier League player uh, sides, which is the division above us. We're in the United Counties League Division 1. So he'd be a decent player in the division above. So there is a chance he could get poached away. I hope he's not going to. But, you know, there's a chance. He's still got a fair amount of pace, aged 44. (laughs) And the man's going to play forever. Um... As the player ages, he'll be more suited to life as an attacking midfielder and may need to be retrained. I don't want to over, over, over explain this part, football manager. The man's already 44 years old. I ain't retraining him for anything. And he's already aged. He's older than me. Much older than me. I was a kid when I used to go and watch this man play for Leicester. So there you go. That's Julian Jochim. We knew all about him anyway. Uh, but now we're having a look for any other potential gems that we've got. So um, sorting by ability, gem number one looks like it's Adam Brown, who is a centre-back who, despite being 17, is on that two-year youth contract. So we're going to get him close to his 19th birthday. Already three-star current ability, which makes him a good player for this league. Five-star potential ability. Um, that is exactly the kind of player that we're looking for because that's someone who's going to be Virtually ever present for the next two years. For as long as he's under contract with us, that man is going to be in the team. Um, Likely similar scenario with Lloyd Ward as well, who's 16 years old, got that awesome two-year youth contract on £5 a week, two-and-a-half-star current ability, five-star potential ability. I'm looking to work out where the cutoff to not being good enough for this league is. It looks like Lloyd Ward still is. And then with the next one down, Alan Carter. This is the problem we were talking about before. So Alan Carter... 22 years old, a solid five-star potential. Um, So he's already a decent player in this league, could potentially get better. And because of that, there's already loads of clubs sniffing around him. So Thamesmead, I don't know what tier the Southern Counties League Division 1 is, um, but we've got various clubs coming in for him. And we're kind of powerless to stop players like this leaving. It's one of the things we are going to need to get used to, playing back down at this level again. Certainly with senior players, it is a bit of a revolving door. Don't get too attached to anybody over the eighteen year, over eighteen years old. It's kind of the opposite to rules for real life. Um if they're if they're over eighteen, they're not gonna be around for very long. Um so you know, Alan Carter might still be here at the start of the season. Jordan Law might still be here at the start of the season, but presumably he's oh, he's not actually wanted. Why is he ineligible? is in the opposition's... Oh, it's because we're playing the under-23s next, so he's in the under-23 squad, which is weird, considering he's one of the best players at the club. I mean, straight away, I'm looking at that thinking, we're quite strong at the back, aren't we? We're not We're not filtered just for defenders, are we? Of our best seven players, five of them are centre-backs. I think I'm getting a bit of an idea of where we need to be strengthening. And the other thing we want to be looking at, of course, is who's got the solid five-star potential, because... These ones that are theoretically five-star potentials all well and good, but they might not get there. I mean, these guys at the bottom, bless their cotton socks. They are awful. Matthew Oddling, as officially the worst player at the club. Wow. Wow. Um, but we're looking for anyone. Sort of any, uh, The problem is we've not got any 16-year-olds in this category. Hmm. It's going to be... It's going to be an interesting one. Let's just have a look at a team report. <laughs> so we're all right for strikers. We've got Joe Chim. 
We've got Steve Edwards, who is a youngster. So 16-year-old striker with five-star potential. Expect to see a lot of Steve Edwards. We'll we'll get used to him. Midfield, we don't really have anybody. We have one central midfielder, Lloyd Ward, who's actually that defensive midfielder that we were looking at before. So um, he'll play games, but probably not in that position. And there's nobody else to play ahead of him. Chris Harvey's 20 years old, so we'll probably leave. Joe Jim can play out on the right wing, but I think I'm probably going to use him as a striker. I mean, it's... It's mad to th- Julian Joachim is old enough to be Steve Edwards' could he be his granddad? He could certainly be his dad. I need a I need a calculator to work out if he could be his granddad. Um Steve Rowe there as a backup on that right wing. But again, awful, rubbish. He isn't the backup. We need we need a midfield. We need to go out and sign an entire midfield. We're good for centre backs, but we have no full backs. And in goal, we do have a fifteen year old goalkeeper who's got potential. And a really stonking beard for a 15-year-old. My word, the testosterone flows well in Charlie McGovern. But I don't know I don't know if I want to... I mean, for a start, I don't want to argue with him. So if he tells me if he's ready for the first team, then I'm just going to go with it because I'm a little bit afraid of him. Um, and we've got a backup one as well who's also not really good enough yet. I mean, I, I am kind of inclined to just go with anybody who is under 18. So at least then we can start to build up some some kind of dynamics. Um, we've got abysmal team cohesion. As you would expect, none of these players, well, only one of these players existed yesterday. So I can understand why they're a little bit, a little bit iffy. Do we not have the, uh, I feel like there's a screen missing here. Is this because I don't have any staff? Do I need an assistant? Joe Chim is my only member of staff. I mean, I may as well make Julian Joe Chim assistant manager. He's 44. You know, you've, you've done your apprenticeship as a coach, Julian. Do you want to be? Do you want to be assistant manager? You absolutely don't, do you? We'll go and we'll go and find a, a, a grown-up assistant manager. But uh, as you can see, this is um, it feels like a, a more intense challenge than home was last year. I don't feel like we've got anybody in that first batch of players who's going to go on and play for England like Dean Morris did. Which, I mean, that was an insane fluke. And I don't think we've got anyone like that this year. I don't know if we're going to get any of these youngsters go on to become heroes. It would be lovely if they did. Um, It's always fun going back 200 episodes in and saying, look at Kev questioning whether Steve Edwards would make it. And then he went on to captain us to Champions League glory. Um, He needs a better haircut if he's going to stick around. Another youngster with a good beard, though. The beards are strong in Lincolnshire, it seems. Lincolnshire boy myself. So uh, yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna leave it there for this little intro video. I've given you a tour of the club. You've got a little bit of a feel of the place. I'm now gonna go and try and sign the players in the positions we need to sign them, just to strengthen things up as it up a bit. We obviously need a midfield without going over our wage budget, which is gonna be a challenge because we're already nearly there. Which is annoying. Um, and then we will be back tomorrow at 7 p.m. for the first two league games where we play Rushton and Higgum or Higham. What do we reckon? Let me know down in the comments. And then we're also away against Burton Park. This game is massive because that's the only game. I only ever played one game of proper football and it was for Blackstones. And he used to play for Posh, I think, Daniel French. He's, he doesn't look 39 in that photograph. They've kept that. They've kept that photo from when he was in the game 20 years ago, I think. Um, but yeah, I uh, I played one game for them in the year 2001. So I am officially a uh, non-league footballer. Apparently, I didn't realise they played this high up the pyramid. I dare say they probably didn't then. Um, but we've got some we've got some awesome friendlies coming up deep in Rangers. I can see from my house. Stamford is just down the road. We've got Celtic coming to town. But we kick things off with a day at the seaside. Off to Skeggy. Excellent stuff. So we'll be back tomorrow for those first two league games. Hopefully some new signings. And hopefully, uh, hopefully we can find a midfield. Uh, but if you have enjoyed this as a first look at Bourne Town Football Club and you're excited for the rest of the series, like I said at the start of the video, I would massively appreciate you leaving a thumbs up. If we can get to 5,000 likes, I can't emphasize enough how much of an amazing boost that would give this series. I can just, I can, I can pretty much guarantee if we get 5,000 likes, we'll hit 100,000 views eventually on this video. And that is, that's mad for a channel of this size. So um, it would be appreciated if you have enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you come back tomorrow for part two. Subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, all that good stuff. And thank you very much for watching.